Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to be talking a little bit now about typography utilizing different fonts in our project. So we're going to be looking at two things here. First, uh, utilizing Google Fonts uh, to display different fonts on our website. And then we're going to be talking a little bit about system fonts and some of the benefits of using system fonts. So let's head over to Google Fonts. Google Fonts. And um, first of all, we basically just need to select the font we're looking for so we can filter those out. Um, we can search by name. Uh, we can, I'm zoomed in a little bit here, but we can see the different fonts. So once you've selected a font or, yeah, once you've selected a font, uh, click on the font you're looking at to applying on your web page. And here you've given lots of different options. Now, not all fonts have all these different varieties. You can see that we've got thin, 100, 100 italic, and so on. Um, the higher the number, the thicker the font, the bolder the font. So typically, um, the 400 or regular is the normal size or normal weight font that we utilize for uh, text. So we're going to need that. And then we're going to select a bold font. So 700 is typically bold. Um, so we're going to use utilize that on our H1 tags. So I'm going to need that too. So you can select um, different weights uh, if you want italics or not. And then once you're happy with all the different font selections, we can now um, embed onto our website. So we can do that by selecting embed over here. We've got two options of applying this um, font on our website, we can use a link. So I can copy this link into my, for example, my index page at the top here, just underneath this link here or above it, somewhere in the head section, I can put that link. And then once I've done that in my CSS, I can use this rule here to specify the font I want to use. Now, I prefer to use the at import. Uh, so I'm going to copy that and then put that onto my CSS page. Now, the reason why I prefer this is because um, I can see what fonts I'm using from my CSS page and I'm not I'm making my uh, HTML uh, untidy or just adding lines to it that I just don't need to see here. So I want to make this as, uh, as short as possible. Um, so now I've got that, I can now see what I've got. Uh, so I'm using a font or apply, going to apply a font called Roberto and it I'm using the weight 700 or 400. So that's the weights I've got available here. So let's apply it to our website. So I'm going to apply it to the whole website to begin with. Now it tells me here how to do that. So I can use font family and so on. So let's uh, put that onto our body. So let's define that and then uh, I paste that right there. So I can further um, type in font weight and now I can define the font weight by the number. So uh, the, the regular was 400. So I do that and then I'll go to my website and see if it changes. And there we go. So now we've applied this new style. I can see if that is worked. If I right click and inspect, I can see that it's using uh, Roberto. Um, notice it's been overridden, the font weight. Um, so if I just disable that, you can see it goes back to what it was. So we're definitely utilizing this font now. Excellent. So uh, what I wanted. Um, just inspecting this H1 tag, um, you can see that it's utilizing font weight 300 potentially there. Um, it is definitely using Roberto. Um, so what I want to do is to, to have, this is a display three. So I need to override display three. So it utilizes uh, the font weight 800. So um, let's override this by going into my CSS. So it's a, let's just double check. It's a display three. 
So I'm going to override that dot display. I think it's dash three, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, dash three. Um, and then uh, I want to use the font weight of 800. So that was the other weight that we had. Oh, sorry, 700. Sorry. Now that's the other weight that we've applied for this font. So um, I do that and now check if that's done. And there we go. Now it's using font weight 700. So let's have a look at these here. Uh, this text, P text. Um, it's using font weight 400. There we go. Um, so that's a simple example. I'm just going to go back into the default view. Uh, so there's a simple example of uh, applying a new font from a Google Fonts to our web page. So what we can also do is it, because like I was maybe suggesting, this is being downloaded from Google. So in addition to loading the page, it's also now loading additional files. In this case, the um, the font file onto our page before our page gets displayed in our browser. The more fonts we use, uh, the potentially the longer it takes to download all those files and then to render that in our browser. So we're always trying to achieve uh, the fastest loading time for our page. That's a, a general goal as a, a web developer to try and make a page load as quickly as possible. And we can be penalized by Google if our page is really slow and it might not rank our page very highly in Google. So maybe people won't even get to see our page. Um, so what we can utilize or what we can use are system fonts. So there's obviously fonts pre-existing or pre-installed onto your operating system. Now it's important to understand that different operating systems will have different font types um, available. So whether you're using Apple or Linux or Windows, Android, uh, iOS, uh, they're all gonna have different font types. So we need to make sure that we style uh, for that. So I've typed in CSS system fonts and there's a great article here at cssstricks.com If I uh, go down, it gives you an idea of the type of system fonts that are used on different operating systems. And what we can do here is apply this system font here. So uh, there's not an easy way of copying that. So I just take that, press a C, and then basically I'm gonna replace uh, this font weight here and this font family with this new line of code so you can see here, and I'll remove that for now. Uh, so you can see here what's going to happen is that if you're using an Apple system, well, it's going to utilize um, the, the Apple fonts. If you're using Windows, it's going to probably come down to here and use this font and so on. So basically what's going to happen is your browser is going to look for this font and then this font and this font and this font and this font and so on until it finds a font. And of course, depending on what operating system will depend on what uh, font it then decides to utilize. But th because this is using your system fonts, there's no download time uh, to download these fonts. Um, so the fonts are, are going to be instantly usable um, by the browser and potentially ensure that your page loads very quickly. So let's just apply that on our page and you can see now it looks just like this. So let's have a look to see what font type it's using. So right click inspect and you can see it is using um, the fonts here. Um, but it's not too easy to understand what exactly what font it's using uh, from this page. Um, it's using one of those for sure. Ah, rendered font, there we go. So. There we go. So that's the font that's been rendered there. Um, let's see, what's this using here? And same again. So for example, let's just take this out. Um, let's just take this font out and then see what now it utilizes. So I refresh the page and you can now see it's using Roboto. Um, you may not have that on your machine. 
So, but you can see clearly what's happening. Um, it's just going to now use another font, maybe Arial this time. That's definitely installed in our page. Yep. So now it's using Arial and so on. So you can see that process it, of um, it looking for the next font that's available on the computer. So we can prove that that is the case by going to C drive and then windows. And then if you look in your font folder, you can see all the different fonts that were installed on your computer. So there we go. So those are two approaches to apply uh, different fonts onto your Bootstrap web page. I'm using, for example, Google fonts or system fonts. Now, you don't have to stop there. If you wanted to, um, there are plenty of other places, um, for example, fonts.com. So if you wanted to pay for fonts, you can do. Now, the basic, um, the general method um, of acquiring or paying for fonts is that you typically pay for page impressions. So if you've got a million users coming to your website, you'll pay for a million um, users uh, or visits um, uh, and so on. So typically that's the type of uh, payment setup if you wanted to pay for fonts. Um, it's not typical uh, to find on many servers that you pay for the font outright. So there are other options for fonts if you're interested.